السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على شف الأنبياء والمرسلين نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن اهتدى بهديه واقتدى بسنة إلى يوم الدين وبعد my dear respected brothers elders friends so while there are certain people people in power people with a certain degree of authority who have dedicated this Friday to address what they think may possibly be the harms of something so very pure and wholesome, we can perhaps dedicate the next few minutes to the best of our abilities to try and explain the purity and the wholesomeness of that same effort, which to some may not be so. So for those of us who know, there's no need to tap into politics. But for those of us who don't know, from a different perspective, from a different angle, there is a group of people, many in number, in a book once that was obviously documented, it was recorded, I saw the number 250 million, 250 million, which tells us not a small number, 250 million, a quarter of a billion is quite a big number. From the Muslims were those who had, to a certain extent, a connection in understanding to a certain degree, again, of what this effort is. And when people don't know, when people have yet to explore, when they have yet to research, when they have yet to delve into what it's all about, then it's very difficult for that person to be able to describe to you exactly what's going on. Not that I've been involved for decades or so, no. But you can ask after this as well, those who have, those who have an understanding of what it is I'm, ta I'm talking about, those who have spent time, and those who give time almost on a daily basis. If you've heard of these titles or these names of a group by the name of Tablighis, or the people of Da'wah, the Ahlul Da'wah, the people of Jama'ah, the people of, I don't know any other names that they give to them. But unless and until we don't spend time with those people, and we don't learn what is it that these people are calling to, what actually is the call of these people, what is it that they invite others towards, then very frankly, from a... a, a, a in Islamic perspective, we have absolutely no right to criticize anyone. And there are many who don't know. We just don't know. And if somebody comes to us with information that's false, it isn't right for us to make a decision based off of somebody else's interpretation of something else. Whether that person may know, whether that person is gone, whether that person has spent time is a whole different ballgame. But if a person decides to make a decision based off of what solely they were told by somebody else, this is not fair, this is not impartial, this is unjust. So from the little experience that I have, that which these people call towards is very pure. And these are not concepts that were born about many hundreds of years after the Prophet ﷺ this isn't something that was introduced as an in innovation to the ummah, no. And I can challenge anybody who finds anything that is not in accordance to the book of Allah and the teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, you rid of it. You openly, you choose not to follow it, that is great. 
There's no, there's, there's, there's no one that will say anything to those who refuse to accept anything that is not from the book of Allah and from the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ. And this is what we preach from here. And in hopefully any other pulpit in, the masjid, in any masjid, this is what is preached. The adherence to the book of Allah and the sunnah of the Prophet ﷺ, the teachings of the Sahaba Ridwanullah ta'ala alayhi majma'een. So let me just very briefly go over what it is that these people call on to. Because you may have encountered them, you may have had them knock on your door, perhaps on a Sunday afternoon or Sunday evening in this neighborhood or in this community, in this locality. And if you live elsewhere, you come from somewhere else, you're just passing by, you're welcome. But then in that case, you may have had them knock on your door. You may have come to a masjid, maybe once after a long time, and lo and behold, somebody just randomly comes up to you, starts talking to you. Let me explain what it is that these people wanted to talk to you about. Now again, a disclaimer. If this person chooses to speak about something else, that's from them. But what are the teachings that are given to these people? Albeit those that are knowledgeable from amongst them and those who may have not amassed the greatest amount of knowledge, which is definitely not the prerequisite to well-wishing for others. For a person to wish well, for a person to care, for a person to be restless, for the plight of his fellow brothers and sisters of this ummah definitely does not require an ample amount of knowledge. I hope we can agree on certain things before we move forward. If I want myself to be saved from the fire of Jahannam, and I want you and by and large the entire ummah to be saved from the fire of Jahannam, for me to be told that I need to keep this restlessness and worry and concern of mine to myself simply because I lack knowledge, this is also unjust and unfair. So regardless how much knowledge a person may have attained, regardless how much he has spent of his life in the company of scholars, regardless how many years he has spent in an institution thereby learning the sciences of Islam, hold on, it doesn't matter. Very frankly, if he has the knowledge, if he has the ability to articulate, if he has the, the ability to make somebody understand faster, quicker, or better than somebody else does, that is from Allah. Musa alayhi salam used to stutter for crying out loud. Musa alayhi salam is one of the five most prominent prophets of Allah. But he was given a very tall task of going to not any ordinary individual, but one of the most rebellious, transgressing individuals the world has ever seen, Fir'aun. So let's come back. What is it that these people preach? What is it that they ask the people to enhance and enrich their beliefs in? Number one, Iman. Now this is very, of course, very vague. We're going to have to go into the details of which this isn't the time. But I'm just trying to make a statement. One of the ulama mentioned that he was there in that part of the world today where an announcement was made earlier this week that this is what these Friday khutbas are going to be dedicated to. And yes, that's exactly what was spoken about. So while that goes on there, let me explain. Number one, they speak about Iman. And you be the judge. Is it fair for somebody to invite somebody else to help enhance their Iman? Why not? Why would anybody not want to invite somebody else? I'm weak, I call you. I'm weak, I invite you. I extend it towards you, hoping thereby that my Iman enhances, that my Iman goes up, because Iman goes up and Iman goes on. Hold on. That was during the time of the Prophet You know how much we are in need of this today? Yesterday I messaged, Wallahi, I'm not giving you my examples from my life because to tell you that I'm the ideal one. No, 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 no. I just meant, I just did this yesterday. I called somebody, I called them, which is very, very not so, it doesn't happen so much anymore because it's not even text message. Now it's other social media platforms, perhaps WhatsApp. I called him. I missed his call. He may have been at work. He said he was on a call, so I'm pretty sure he was at work. He messaged me back, which is a trend. And he said, I'm on a call. What's up? I said, I just wanted to ask you if you read Quran yesterday. He sent these, you know, emojis, like these eyes popping up and these thinking ones and like, nobody does that. I don't do it either. I don't know why I did it yesterday. But why would this not be nice? Somebody, you've spent time with them, you've been places with them, you've had lunch and dinner with them, you've, you're, you're close to them or you're acquainted with them. 
of all the things in the world, is this not perhaps one of the greatest reminders you can send someone? It's become awkward. It's become, it's something we shy away from to tell somebody, let's sit down, eh? Let's talk about Allah, huh? Let's talk about Allah, brother. Imagine the next time somebody comes up to you, okay? These are real, this is real life. And someone's like, so what's going on? So you didn't get married, perhaps again. You don't have any other children. You didn't change your job. You don't drive a new car, nor did you move out into a big house. So when they ask you, so what's, what else is new? You just continue standing there. May Allah forgive us when there's nothing else to continue the conversation with. We ask, oh, did you hear about so-and-so? Which many a times ends up becoming backbiting. You didn't have to talk about anybody else. He was asking you or you were asking him, what else is new in your life? But anyhow, it happens. Imagine the next time somebody tells you that, so what else is new? Hey, we have a few minutes right now. You want to just remember Allah? You want to talk about Allah for a few minutes? I wish everybody did this from now till next Friday. And whatever response you received, please come share it with me. I'll be here for the next Friday next week. It's awkward as anything. But now let me tell you the reward for it. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah has mentioned this in the tafsir of one of the verses of the Holy Quran. There were two friends. Two friends. They went to a place. Sadly, I don't even talk about those places. I'm not even referring to such places. I'm talking about talking about Allah in Allah's house. It has become awkward. Yes, it has. So anyways, these two friends got together. Iltaqarrajulan fisuq. They got together in the marketplace. Now let's interpret that in today's time. We don't go to the market anymore any, either. We shop on Amazon, we do everything online. So they just, they were at a place where you don't so frequently mention Allah's name. We'll, we'll leave it at that. And they said, what did one say to the other? He says, Ta'al nastaghfirullah fi ghaflatin nas. You know what? Everybody's completely oblivious right now. Nobody's thinking about Allah. They're thinking about the newest, most expensive jacket. One of the students in our class last night, no, last night was Thursday. On Wednesday night, I asked him, what kind of jacket was that? He named the brand. I said, how much did he get it for? And what, like, he barely speaks in the class. But when it was time to answer that question, he said, 1.2K. I said, okay, $1,200 for a jacket. MashaAllah. Nonetheless, so these people are lost. They're not lost, but during that time, they're thinking about other things. Nobody remembers. Very seldom does somebody remember Allah in the marketplace, let alone any other place where Allah is not remembered. So they said, let us remember Allah. Nobody is doing it. Let us be the black sheep. Because the Prophet ﷺ is reported to have said what? Bada al-Islam gariba. Islam began as what? As a celebrity. No. It began as a stranger. Went to everybody. What are you talking about? One God? We have 360 idols, my friend. You're telling us worship one God? Where are you coming from? This is alien to us. This doesn't resonate with us. It began as a stranger. And a time is coming. And try this for yourself now in the next seven days. That time may have already come. We're not even talking about the disbeliever that we're addressing. We're talking about the fellow Muslim. Talk to him. Hey. تعال نستغفر الله في غفلة الناس Hey, let's remember Allah for a few moments while people are oblivious, while people aren't remembering Him. Let us remember Him. So they decided to remember Allah. That's it. I'm not making this up. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah has mentioned this. In case anybody finds needs the reference, I'll find it too exactly where. So they decided to remember Allah. Like these brothers might come to you and knocking on your door. If anybody has ever come asking for funds for anything, that person has no clue what he's doing. That person is not involved with such a pure effort that people may possibly want to ban in the world now. That person, if he has come to you with any ulterior motive, with any other purpose or reason, that is not affiliated with this. It has nothing to do with this. I have to be very straightforward. I know what's preached, I know what's told, I know what's, what's the instructions that are given. And they're given instructions every, instructions every time they're sent out. So they invite you towards Allah's greatness, towards speaking about the majesty, the highness, the grandeur, and the might of Allah. 
You can't possibly challenge this. Those two did it. Ta'al, astaghfirullah fi ghaflat nas Nobody's doing it, so let us do it. Let us be the, the outcasts. Let us go against the status quo. Nobody does it, we'll do it, so what? Whether the people like it or not, we're still going to try. So they did it. One of these two friends died and moved on. And the other saw him in a dream and asked him, hey, what happened? And this is common amongst those who were God-fearing, pious, and righteous, amongst the friends of Allah after they move on. Other friends of Allah see them. Anyhow, so he saw him in a dream and he asked him, what happened? How did Allah fare with you? What, 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 what did Allah do with you after he left this world? He said, hey, remember that one night when we were in such and such place where people don't so often remember Allah? He said, yes. He said, remember when we got together and I asked you, why don't we just remember Allah for a short while? He said, yes. He said, it was that as a result of which Allah forgave me. And somebody comes to us to ask us, to remind us, to enhance our iman in Allah. You know, at the time of Sahaba, iman used to go up and iman used to come down. And they had the auspicious noble company of the Prophet ﷺ to attend to. And imagine a person's iman at that time. You show them Jannah or Jahannam, it probably wouldn't even help increase because it's already at the, at the acme of what their iman could be. But then, we're 1400 years past. It's not a matter of iman coming and iman going anymore. Uh, iman going up and down. Now it's a matter of iman comes and iman goes. And the Prophet ﷺ said so. He said, يُسْبِحُ الرَّجُلُ مُؤْمِنًا وَيُمْسِي kafira." Um, a day will come when in the morning people will have iman. But by the, by the time the sun sets, iman is gone. How can we possibly question somebody's coming to me to invite me towards Allah? To help me enhance my iman in Allah, in the angels, in the books, in the prophets, and in everything that happens in this world being decreed, divine destination of Allah. And the things that await us in the life hereafter, I don't understand. And if we don't know, this is just one of the many things. Two, they speak about our belief in the sunnah of Rasulullah being the key to success. Who challenges this? In their right minds. Is there another way? A way that Allah has prescribed from above the seven heavens? Allah announces that this is the way and no other way until the day of Qiyamah. And then they speak about perfecting our salah. And wallahi, not to criticize or point fingers at anybody. We come, I mean, this, these are people that come to the masjid for the love of the house of Allah. You've seen it with your own eyes. How many people coming to the masjid are in dire need of working on their salat? And if this is me, ask me how much I need to work on it myself. We talk about it. Frankly, we've read a hadith upon a hadith in hundreds about performing salah thoroughly, performing wudu excellently. It's become a routine. It's become a ritual. Salat, Allah said, Tanha anil fahshai wal munkar. It has the power to stop somebody from lewdness, inequity, and shamelessness. In other words, I pray salah, I should be devoid of any bad habits because Allah promises this is what Salat offers but hey, it hasn't changed a thing in my life so when somebody comes to me to invite me to tell me or call it preaching if you will if they, if they want to talk to me about me improving my Salah why not? I mean this is an excellent reminder how could you possibly again challenge this there are people challenging this on this very same Friday how does somebody ban a talk in which others are being invited to help perfect their salah? And I mean, if we had time, we'd go into the details of the rewards for performing salat as it ought to be performed and how salat was performed by the Master Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his companions. But this is not the time. And then they speak about enhancing our knowledge. Yeah, there are people with all the knowledge in the world, be it secular knowledge, be it Islamic science. But the purpose of all of this was to learn what Allah wants from me in every moment of my life. 
And this is knowledge, that which inspires us to do what Allah is pleased with, that which we can reconnects us with Allah. When somebody comes and invites me to learn what will benefit me in this world and in the life hereafter, how again do I challenge this? I don't. With my right mind, I can't possibly. You're inviting me to learn. I mean, I've mastered languages and sciences. I've gone overseas. I don't know how to please Allah though. I don't know how to pray my salat though. I don't know how to behave as a husband or a father though. And somebody invites me to learn these, these practices of the Prophet ﷺ, these teachings of the Prophet ﷺ, and we question. When somebody invites me, what else? Coupled with this is the remembrance of Allah. Somebody invites me and encourages me, inspires me to read the Quran, to remember Allah on a daily basis, whether you choose to do this with beads or not, that's your choice. Nobody, nobody's going to tell you it's a must to use beads. These are small little insinuations or whisperings, promptings of shaitan. No, brother, you're not supposed... Hold on, forget the beads. Just remember Allah. My tongue is busy and moist with backbiting and lying and cheating and gossiping and carrying tales and the works. Very seldom has a day gone by when my tongue was honored and blessed to remember Allah a hundred times. I mean to say Allah, if I started now I'd finish in the next two minutes while you people listen. Allah, Allah. And when somebody does it, they question it. Completely unfair. This is injustice. You don't know, you've never seen it. Any, anytime anybody came to me to talk to me about it, I flat out refused. Not fair. Give them an ear. What was his name? Tufail ibn Amr Dawsi radiallahu anhu. Big man from the tribe of Dawus. You know who he brought to Islam? He brought Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu. He went to Mecca. He said, there's no way, Medina to Munawwara, there's no way I'm listening to what he has to say. The Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, he took cotton and he placed it inside of his ears. That's not fair. But he was a sworn, he staunchly said no. There's no way I'm even going to let his words penetrate in. I'm gonna make. He took cotton and filled up his ears. But he went. Lo and behold, Allah had a different plan for this big man. And he happened to hear, unintentionally, inadvertently, he happened to hear the verses of the Quran by the Prophet ﷺ, and he was mesmerized. He was shocked. He said, wait. He admonished himself think, saying, Tufail, you're, 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 you're an intelligent man. Maybe you should give an attentive ear to what this man has to say. Do it. Listen to what these people call unto and ask those who are involved and ask those who spend a great chunk of their daily lives worrying about others, caring about others, inviting others to come to the masjid. This is problematic. This is the only safe haven on planet Earth for crying out loud. And just wait, because the worst is yet to come. And then we have a problem with this too. And what else? They invite us on how we can fulfill other people's rights. Who dare challenge this? And five, on how we can do everything exclusively for the pleasure of Allah. Who has a problem with that? And finally, you've got time, you've got health, you've got wealth. Use some of it for Allah's deen. You know, 1400 years ago, they invested everything. Maybe that's not what's being asked of us. But whatever we have, perhaps a little bit of it, for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, invest it. This is, this is all that they call unto. Some with a little bit more detail, much more detail, some with less. But these are the six. Call it the points, call it the qualities. We didn't go into the details. I'd be glad to give you details. Matter of fact, you can come to the markas tonight. We'll speak about it there too in great detail. But if anybody hasn't gone yet, this is not a time for me to do what they call tashkil, but why not? If you have a few days off in the, in the winter break, make an intention to go. If you've yet to spend some time to understand what pure, wholesome effort is being banned in a different part of the world, you're doing injustice. Spend some time, and then inshallah, if you have questions, we'd be glad to answer. <clears throat> الحمد لله الذي أمر بمصاحبة الأخيار ونهى عن مصاحبة الأشرار وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له بيّن لعباده طرق الخير ليسلكوها وبيّن لهم طرق الشر ليجتنبوها وأشهد أن محمدًا عبده ورسوله 
رغب في اختيار الجليس الصالح وحذر من الجليس السوء صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه ومن سار على نهجه وتمسك بسنته إلى يوم الدين وسلم تسليما أما بعد فيا عباد الله اتقوا الله سبحانه وتعالى وعلموا أن للإنسان في هذه الحياة أن الإنسان في هذه الحياة لا يستطيع أن يعيش وحده في عزلة تامة عن الناس فهو بحاجة إلى مخالطتهم ومجالستهم وهذا الاختلاط لا بد أن تكون له آثار حسنة أو قبيحة حسب نوعية الجلساء والخلطاء ومن هنا تضافرت نصوص الكتاب والسنة على اختيار الجليس الصالح والابتعاد عن الجليس السيء قال الله سبحانه وتعالى واصبر نفسك مع الذين يدعون ربهم بالغداة والعشي يريدون وجهه وقال تعالى وإذا رأيت الذين يخوضون في آياتنا فأعرض عنهم حتى يخوضوا في حديث غيره وإما ينسينك الشيطان فلا تقعد بعد الذكرى مع القوم الظالمين وقال رسولنا عليه الصلاة والسلام مثل الجليس الصالح والجليس السوء كحامل المسك ونافخ الكير فحامل المسك إما أن يحذيك وإما أن تبتاع منه وإما أن تجد منه ريحا طيبة ونافخ الكير إما أن يحرق ثيابك وإما أن تجد منه ريحا خبيثة أيها المسلم اجعل هذا الحديث الشريف دائما على بالك وأنت تخالط الناس في الأسواق والمجالس وفي البيوت والمدارس وفي المكاتب والدوائر ففي كل مجال تخالط فيه الناس فاختر لصحبتك ومجالستك ومشاركتك في مزاولة أي عمل اختر الصالحين من الناس ليكونوا لك جلساء وزملاء وشركاء ومستشارين وفقنا الله سبحانه وتعالى لما يحب ويرضى أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم الأخلاء يومئذ بعضهم لبعض عدو إلا المتقين بارك الله لنا ولكم في القرآن العظيم ونفعنا وإياكم بالآيات والذكر الحكيم أستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلله فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا ومولانا محمد عبده ورسوله صلى الله تعالى عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه وبارك وسلم تسليما كثيرا كثيرا أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى مخبرا وآمرا إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد عبدك ورسولك وصل على المؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات خصوصا على أمير المؤمنين سيدنا أبي بكر الصديق رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا عثمان بن عفان رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى أمير المؤمنين سيدنا علي بن أبي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه وعلى سيدة نساء أهل الجنة فاطمة الزهراء رضي الله تعالى عنها وعلى سيدة شباب أهل الجنة الحسن والحسين رضي الله تعالى عنهما وعلى الستة الباقية من العشرة المبشرة وعلى سائر الصحابة والتابعين رضوان الله تعالى عليهم أجمعين اللهم عز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر الإسلام والمسلمين 
اللهم انصر من نصر الإسلام والمسلمين واخذل من خذل الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم اجعل بلاد الإسلام آمنة مطمئنة من كل البليات والآفات ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين والحمد لله رب العالمين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروني أذكركم واشكروا لي ولا تكفرون Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah, Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. أشهد أن محمد رسول الله حي على الصلاة حي على الصلاة حي على الفناح حي على الفناح قد قامت الصلاة قد قامت الصلاة الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر سبحان الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله ولتنظر نفس ما قد قدمت لغد واتقوا الله إن الله خبير بما تعملون ولا تكونوا كالذين نسوا الله فأنساهم أنفسهم أولئك هم الفاسقون لا يستوي أصحاب النار وأصحاب الجنة أصحاب الجنة هم الفائزون لو أن نزلنا هذا القرآن على جبل لرأيته خاشعا لرأيته خاشعا متصدعا من خشية الله 
وَتِلْكَ الْأَمْثَالُ نَضْرِبُهَا لِلنَّاسِ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَتَفَقَّعُونَ الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المهيمن المؤمن المهيمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البابئ المصور له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم الله أكبر سمع الله لمن حمده الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر
السلام عليكم ورحمة الله السلام عليكم ورحمة الله استغفر الله لا إله إلا الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا ونكوننا من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزي قلوبنا بعض إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوخاب ربنا اغفر لنا ولإخواننا الذين سبقونا بالإيمان ولا تجعل في قلوبنا غلا للذين آمنوا ربنا إنك رؤوف رحيم اللهم حبب إلينا الإيمان وزينه في قلوبنا وكره إلينا الكفر والفسوق والعسيان وجعلنا من الراشدين اللهم اجعلنا من الذين لا خوف عليهم ولا هم يحزنون اللهم اغفر لحينا وميتنا وشاهدنا وقائدنا وصغيرنا وكبيرنا وذكينا ومسانا اللهم من أحييته منا فأحيه على الإسلام ومن توفيته منا فتوفه على الإيمان يا فاطر السماوات والأرض أنت ولينا في الدنيا والآخرة توفنا مسلمين وألحقنا بالصالحين غير خزايا ولا نداما ولا مفتونين ربنا تقبل منا إنك أنت السميع العليم وتب علينا إنك أنت التواب الرحيم وصلى الله تعالى على خير خلقه سيدنا محمد وآله وأصحابه أجمعين برحمتك يا أرحم الراحمين